So welcome to part three of the motion detection tutorial. In this part, we're going to explore the most advanced and probably the best method for motion detection with a stationary camera, and that is with background subtraction. So the main idea with background subtraction is that we learn a background model of our, of our scene, and we can use this background model to determine what is actually moving and what is it? So we basically subtract it from our current scene. So OpenCV has a pretty good overview of it. We have our current frame and our background model. We subtract our background model from our current frame, do some thresholding, and we get a foreground mask. Now OpenCV has a lot of good methods to do this. We have um, background subtractor mod2 and knearest neighbors. These are two powerful functions. There are several more, but in this tutorial, we're going to focus on these. So MOG2, uh, MOG stands for mixture of Gaussians, which every is, that's where every pixel is modeled as a mixture of Gaussians to determine, you know, what, what is the threshold value? What's the probability of, you know, this pixel having this value for the background? And K nearest neighbors is another method. Um, the documentation is an open CV. It's pretty extensive, but it doesn't have the details from the papers. So the details of these are kind of out of scope of these, and I'll be honest, I'm not fully sure how they work, but I'm familiar with how to use them, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So so back to this tutorial. So let's, let's go through these imports right here. So we have some pretty basic imports. We have OpenCV and NumPy, Matplotlib, and Motion Detection Utils. So if you've been following the previous videos, in our Motion Detection Utils, we have a function called Get Contour Detections, which enables us to get bounding boxes from our motion mask. So essentially, we get a mask like this, which in this case is called a foreground mask, but we're calling it a motion mask since we're looking for moving objects. And we're gonna draw bounty boxes around it with get bounding react after we find the contours, both using OpenCV. And we wanna make sure the bounty box is large enough. So we define a threshold parameter right here. And if it's not larger than this, we don't consider a detection. And now right here is our null maximal suppression. So what null maximal suppression does is if we have Bounded boxes that overlap with each other. If the overlap's too large, we remove it. Um, the scores right here, these scores are actually areas of the bounded boxes. We want to heavily weigh bounded boxes with larger areas. And also, if we have a bounded box contained in another box, like there's an example with our optical flow, but like this right here, a bounded box contained here, we want to remove it. And that's what this non-maximal suppression algorithm does. And of course, we have a function to draw bounded boxes and another function to create a GIF to display our results. So that being said, let's jump into this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to initialize our background subtractor right here. So the background subtractor we could either use a mixture of Gaussians two. Oh, and the two is a is um, an improvement to the original mixture of Gaussians. So there's a mog, and there's mog two, and another one's k nearest neighbors. So this variance threshold uh, dictates how how much variance you have between image frame pixels and image frames, and we also have this option for detect shadows. Um, we have a shadow threshold. So basically, we create a foreground mask in this and we have a foreground mask in and it can detect shadows so we have shadows in all these cars it turns out this doesn't always work so well um so the the shadows are going to be a value of 127 and the actual objects are going to be um, 255 and in this case it thinks everything's a shadow and it, i found it very hard to tune for this data and maybe you could tune it for some different data but i'm not even going to mess with it for this data set so let's go ahead and run this right here so we, so in this thing right here, we are passing the first five frames, and we are running this into our background subtraction model. So the way we do this is we create the background subtraction model. We can set any thresholds that any more thresholds that we weren't here if we don't do it in this constructor, and then we just run it with the apply function. So this does two things right here. This updates the background subtraction model, and it gives us the foreground mask. So. 
here's the background subtraction model after five frames and here's the foreground mask and as we feed more and more frames into this background subtraction model we're going to get better and better results and hopefully our foreground mask will be more and more accurate so let's go ahead and see how we clean these motion ma these foreground masks up into motion mask and how we get detections and run it on a video and just for reference the end result looks like this so this is much better than the previous videos and once we start um you know really learning the background you can see we even get very small detections up here these cars that even an advanced neural network such as yolo might not be able to detect so let's go ahead and see so we simply threshold this by minimum threshold if we want to you know include the shadows not include we could change this minimum threshold value so in this case it's just going to be zero anything greater than zero is going to be in this threshold we're going to blur it and we're going to perform a morphological operation we're going to do an open and then a close so open right here is we're going to clean out all the small noise and then we're going to fill in the remaining contours so similar to what we did last time and then bam here's our motion mask right here we're still getting shadows we haven't cleaned them up entirely but we have some pretty good separation along all these vehicles so once again, we're going to just create a copy of our mask so we can plot on it. We're going to get our contour detections with a function that we described at the beginning of the video. We get bounding boxes and scores. The scores are actually our bounding box areas. And we're going to plot them on the image and show them. So right here, we have these right here. Now we need to do some non-maximal suppression. We have some bo small boxes contained inside. We even have something right there, right there, right there, a couple in here. And we're gonna non-max suppress these. So after we do our non-maximal suppression, it looks like we had 34, now we have 27. So we took out seven boxes. Let's go ahead and draw them on the image. And you can see we get rid of all these small things right here and we have much cleaner results. So now we can perform our detection pipeline. So the first thing we want to do is we want to feed our background subtraction model into the function along with our current frame and along with our hyperparameters right here. This kernel is a hyperparameter for our morphological operations that we're going to perform on the mask. So we obtain the foreground mask and update the model. This is kind of two steps in one. We get the clean motion mask from the foreground mask and perform our morphological operations on it with this kernel. We want to get our initially proposed con detections from our contours using the bounding box threshold. We separate them into bounding boxes and scores and use that to perform non-max suppression and get the clean detections. So this and this. So now while that's running, I've already ran these cells. So I'm using K nearest neighbors here. Um, we could see these two background models after only 90 frames. So on the left, we have the mixture of Gaussians too. We can see even after 90 frames, we still have some cars from that, that, that have been passing through the scene are still here. It hasn't quite knocked all these out yet, but they're almost gone. And then over here, the K nearest neighbors background model is not quite enough frames to remove all these vehicles from it. So it still has them as, you know, dark splotches. But as we get more and more frames, the models are going to get better and better and have better uh, knowledge of the actual background and the results will get even better. So we haven't even given these models a chance to really perform. I would say probably give them a thousand frames before you really start trusting them. So being said, we can see what the K nearest neighbors one looks like. So here's K nearest neighbors and here is the mod two. So you can put them side by side. You can see they both, ha both have similar performance and they're both able to detect very small targets that are far away. So that's all for this one. Hopefully y'all learned something about background subtraction. I'll see you in the next one so for some more, more advanced motion detection methods. Have a good one.